All right. Happy Friday, everybody. My name is Crystal Holliman, and I'm a digital anchor here at the News 10 Plus Digital Desk, fixing my microphone. And I am joined by News 10 Sports Co-Director Tim Stout. How are you this Friday? Ready for the weekend. So are we. Does that make sense? It does. Just checking the final leaderboard here in the second round of the British Open. I had it up here for you, actually. Five, five shot lead, huh? Right five shot lead. That's pretty good. Let me pull it up here so everybody can see. I wonder how long it'll last. See how many guys broke this is what par? I have. Um, 23 guys are under par. I guess out of the 75 or so who made the cut, the cut was three over par. Um, I mean, uh, this Brian Harmon, I saw him play at the Rocket Mortgage Classic in Detroit. Really? He's just a little guy, left hand, 36 years old, played at Georgia, but he can hit it a long way. He's a wonderful putter. And today he made a lot of them. He made a lot of par saves. He made eight pars in a row on the back, eagled 18 to get to a 65, which is 600 today, par 71 there. Um, so now the pressure's on him on the way. He's, and listening to him afterward, he was mature and wise enough to realize that it's a great start. He's in the final group tomorrow, with, with, and he's going to have to play with a hometown favorite, Tommy Fleet. I was going to say, there's a lot the of. The way Ricky have. Fowler was the favorite in Detroit a couple of weeks ago, uh, Fleetwood will be the favorite with the fans tomorrow. Although the European fans are very polite, very they polite. Are. They traditionally have been that. They're not like soccer. We'll you get go to off, that. They're polite. <laughs> We'll get to that. Not always, because wasn't there um, somebody who was making kind of a ruckus during somebody's swing not too long ago? Yeah, but that happens everywhere. And the guy's sensitive, too. Okay. I mean, the, I would have, just like the movie Caddyshank, miss it. When a guy, miss it. Remember that? Is that what you say to David Andrews when he's getting ready to talk on camera? He, I don't, you don't need to yell miss it for him to miss it. <laughs> what about the weather? It's 91% uh, precipitation, six Well, I mean, it was supposed to be gross. bad. For the first two days and it was anything but although it got windier as the day went on today to me it'll be a lot more challenging in europe and those places the later the day goes the wind tends to come up and that makes it tougher and i think the wind really was a factor in the first two days for those that played later in the day um i see here the this is not the man from spain man from spain that i selected so that he was actually adrian was actually my second choice well, I picked Cam Smith. Where is he? Uh, well, where is Cam, where is Cam Smith? He's the defending champion, and uh, I don't think he's near the top. I hope he made the cut. Can't win if you don't make the cut. <laughs> That's what I hear. You don't Jordan. Make, uh, Cam Smith. I don't like what the, the direction you're going. I'm I don't. I don't like I, that direction. I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't sound to me like he's going to repeat. There's Kaka down there. Um, it's not looking good. There's a projected cut, so. The cut's at plus three, right? Is that what uh, it says? Yes. Yeah, the cut's at plus, yeah, th plus three. You had to shoot plus three to make it. I must have missed him. I don't, I think Justin did. Rose is pretty far down there. Well, we won't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, it, he's not at near the top at what I say, 21 guys are under par. Mm -hmm. Now it just depends on what the weather's like during the weekend and how tough the pin placements will be on Saturday and Sunday. The other um, big news, we've actually talked about this a little bit um, over the past couple of weeks, is the Washington Commanders sold to a group that includes Magic Johnson. And what was the cost? $6.05 billion. billion. He's not the majority owner. He is not. But you're going to see him tonight on the sports crying. He did an NBC interview on the Today Show where he's oh, all emotional. God. He's all... He's all worked up emotionally because he gets a chance to be an NFL owner, but he's got a small portion of the Dodgers I mean, he has you know he's he has a small portion of a lot of businesses but they can say that he's a small portion owner the thing he said that's note that after this year they may change the nickname from commanders that's interesting to me so they just that's a big marketing change because you went through everything just to change them to the commanders not too long ago well, for six billion dollars, if that's what you paid for it, you can change the nickname. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Great. I don't know that they will, but you know, uh, you write down here how will the players react. That oh, won't be any. Um, 
you know, it's, that's hard to say. I think it's more important how do the players get along with each other and the head coach. If they get along well with those guys and have success, you don't have that much interaction with management and the ownership. Some do, some don't. So obviously what he's here, um, he's there for the showman. He's 63, now he'll be 64 next month. This is from earlier today. We don't have any sound on this. That's all right. You're going to hear him? It's 620. All right. That's what we got. And then also today the women's FIFA World Cup starts. U.S. going for a three-peat, taking on Vietnam. There's a lot of talk about Vietnam because this is really big for that country. All right. But chances of them beating the U.S., not great. But much like the British Open. I bow to your expertise. They play in New Zealand tonight against Vietnam. It's in group play. It is 9 p.m. our time. Don't forgive me if I miss it. I know, I know. Weekends here. You're going to be busy watching the Barbie movie. I get it. Uh, no, but I am going to go to Oppenheimer. And we don't go to movies. We don't go to hardly any movies at all, mostly because I never understand them. Or, you know, when we grew up, we went to movies all the time. And the movies I watch the most are the ones I've seen a great deal of the time from 20, 30 years ago. I used to love the Gosh, early James Bond close. movies. The last 15, I have absolutely no idea. Like what the, the Roger first Moore? Thing. Well, I would, yeah, yeah, I mean, the new ones, the last 10, I don't understand the plot from the moment they come on the screen to the end that they come on. Now, if you want to see a lot of action, I guess, that's why I wouldn't go to the, uh, what is it, the man, for, or the, what is it, uh, Tom Cruise's flick. Oh, the Mission Impossible or the Maverick? Uh, the, the understanding for yeah. me is impossible. Um, are you going to go see it on the really big screen? I'll go to like, Oppenheimer. Oh, you mean IMAX? I don't know. I haven't got that. There's only that. two theaters in Michigan that are and carrying one's it. next door, right? No, that one it does not have it in the 70 millimeter. Like, the director prefers people to watch it on because then you get to see everything. One is in Detroit and one's in Grand Rapids. Well, I, I know more about World War II than I know about sports, which wouldn't need to be a lot. Before you say that. I would never say so it. So therefore, but Oppenheimer, I'm anxious to go see. I actually minored in American history, and that was my I just got back two Oppenheimer. years ago from a trip out where to Las Cruces and Alamogordo, and let me tell you, it is in the middle of nowhere. I don't know when they picked a remote spot to test that thing. They did a good job? It was a remote spot. All right, they did a good and job. It was 60-whatever years ago, and it ain't much more, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> It hasn't exactly developed today, the last time I saw it. You uh, don't want to be driving out there and run out of gas because you're going to be there a while. Yikes. All right, well, I look forward to your review on that next right. week. Um, what else is coming up on the sports desk other than the oh, commander? There's sale? a huge high school girls softball three-day tryout camp in front of college coaches everywhere. Joey went and covered it this afternoon. I didn't know the East Lansing Aquatic Center had softball fields, but they do. They do. And four of them were in action today. We'll, we'll, he has a story on that. He was in four different places. And we got a, one of the Lug Nuts players speaks for his teammates, says that, surprise, those guys aren't nearly as homesick. They like being in Lansing because they claim there's a lot to do. I'll be curious to hear what he has in mind. Okay. So uh, they like being in Lansing. He says all those guys enjoy being in Lansing, even though it's Class A. Um, so good. Anyway, we got all that tonight. You like having them here. Well, speaking of lug nuts, there will be extra innings on Monday, but there will not be a stout on sports live on Monday. And then we'll be back on Tuesday. Why aren't we on Monday? I won't be here. Oh, all right. Well, I can't do it if you're not here. I won't be here, but I do have uh, extra innings in very good hands between Seth and Samantha. So they'll be taking care of extra innings. Monday morning at 9.30, that's when we bring in the Lug Nuts voices, and they tell us all about the series. It's pretty fun. All right. There you all go. Right. That's what we have. Look forward to uh, Tim's review of Oppenheimer next week. And other than that, we'll see you at 6 o'clock for more sports. Thanks for watching.